Well, hello, Facebook. I'm back again. I uh, tried to do a broadcast yesterday and had some software conflicts. Um, so I worked that all out. So today I want to talk about spiritual flow. I want to talk about how to stay in the flow when there's a flow in a meeting. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I'm constantly in meetings. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> uh, constantly, <coughs> excuse me, in meetings where I see us going in and out of flow or not maintaining flow. And in the past, when I've seen real moves of God and, uh, that are sustained, it's because the spiritual flow of meetings were sustained. There wasn't the in and out of hitting and missing in a meeting, but a constant ongoing uh, unveiling of God in the meeting, and it was all due to the spiritual flow. In the, uh, in the Legacy School coming up uh, February 10th, we're going to talk about spiritual flow, presence, the five salahs that hold tension in meetings, that cause tensions to be able to uh, bring us to the next place and the next place and the next place so we have an unfolding uh, thing going on inside a meeting. But today I want to talk just briefly, about 15 minutes again, uh, mainly about spiritual flow in our own lives. Uh, you can apply this in your own life. You can apply this in the corporate, li uh, corporate life when you come into a corporate setting. Uh, and so the question really gets down to is how do we maintain spiritual flow? And I start, start looking in Revelation 1.10, very familiar passage. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice as of trumpet saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches that are in Asia and Ephesus, and he names the churches. And then he said, I heard a voice uh, spoke with me, and being turned, he turned to see that voice, basically, and he goes on. And the main verse is verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, what does it really mean to be in the Spirit? This spiritual encounter that John had enabled him to be able to write the entire book of Revelation. And he starts out in 110, and the key of it was, he said, I was in the Spirit. And what does it mean that he was in the Spirit? The word was in the Greek means to become. He was in the place in the Spirit where what was happening in the Spirit, he had engaged himself into it. It was becoming a part of him with an understanding of what was going on. That's why he was told to write the book. So he was in the Spirit. The word in in the Greek means a fixed position in state or time. And so not only was this uh, place in the spirit that he was at um, there available for him and he found it and became a portion of it, he also decided to remain fixed in that place and time in that state. And so what I, I kind of liken it like this, he found a chamber of God that was in the spirit. In the spiritual realm, there's many, many things that God wants to accomplish in a meeting. There are many things God wants to do in meetings, but there's something specific for every meeting when we gather. And I, I, I liken it like that there's a chamber that God has placed all those elements in, and we need to get in the spirit, and we need to find, get fixed in that chamber, in that spiritual realm. He wasn't just in and out. I think a lot of times we believe, well, if I'm just praying in the Spirit, I'm in the Spirit. Well, you're praying in the Spirit, not necessarily are you fixed in a spiritual state when you're praying in the Spirit. Sometimes it just becomes almost like an exercise that we do, and we've lost the meaning of just praying in the Spirit. John became fixed, and in the vastness of that spiritual realm, there was an area where he went, and he stayed put. He did it move around looking for something else because in that chamber in that place in god there was something god wanted to do with his life and he said write this book down so he was fixed but he was also fixed in the lord's day and many are uh, it, there was a certain time uh, a specific moment so when we start to talk about spiritual flow there are two things that really come into play us being positioned and staying positioned in the spiritual realm in what God is wanting to do in that moment and also realizing that that moment is a specific moment of time, a specific place in God. And those are the things he's wanting to bring out 
that we can all benefit from those things. Uh, I think that sometimes, you know, we, we drift because our mind is drifting and different things. Uh, but it says that he was fixed and he says that he was fixed in the Lord's day. Now the word uh, in means this. It also means this. When we start to look deeper, it's not just fixed state, not a fixed position, but it also means the marker of the manner by which an event occurs. In other words, there's a specific marker in that state of being fixed. There's a specific manner that's unfolding in that state of being fixed. And he says it this way. He said, I was fixed in the, in the spirit, the spirit meaning the pneuma. It means the breath of God. It means the, the Holy Spirit, the DNA makeup of God's spiritual dynamics. He was fixed in those dynamics in that manner. And because of that, an event started to unfold. So it was a distinguishable mark as a marker of a manner, it was a distinguishable mark that he carried God's breath from that event in the spiritual realm into the earth realm, read, wrote the book of Revelation so that we could have that now for this day. So he was in the right time and he was in a set time in God. It was on the Lord's day. Now the word on again means fixed. It means in. It has the same definition. But a further study in it, you realize that it's more than that meaning. It actually is a marker of an extent of time. So not only is it a marker of the manner by which something unfolds, it's also the marker by the extent of time within something, meaning it's very specific again. So I put it kind of like this. The manner by which something occurs is exact and the moment of time that it occurs is specific. That is spiritual flow. Those two things, if we could maintain the manner by which we are doing something in an exact form, and the moment of time that we're doing it in, that's where the timing comes in prophetically, that timing being specific, and maintain that. And so when we start to see spiritual flow open up in a service, there's generally a theme that God is trying to convey in that meeting. There's something he wants to bring out of the moment of time in a very specific way, in an exact way, so that we could have a greater understanding. And these moments come, and I believe we all have experienced it where a moment comes, but then we experience a frustration because we seem to drift around trying to find the next thing, when in reality, we haven't exactly looked at everything in that chamber of God has for that moment of time. It's almost an infinite thing. That's why the Salahs that David talked about are tensions. They're pauses of reflection, but it was the whole tension of the frequencies and sounds that were coming. Uh, and we're going to talk about that here in a moment. Uh, because those uh, frequencies and sounds were holding tension, putting a demand for the next thing within that chamber of the spiritual realm of that time and place that God was wanting to open up to us. And so it's not just sitting here praying in tongues and saying, I'm in the spirit. It's, it's settling yourself. It's focusing yourself. It's hearing God. It's discerning the moment, knowing there's something specific that God wants to bring. And everybody can have a place in this. And I've seen this go where one person was prophesying and stopped in the middle. And another person picked up and finished, stop, uh, uh, finished prophesying, picking up right in the middle of that sentence. I've actually seen that with five or six people pass one right after the other, after the other, after the other. They were all in the same chamber hearing the same thing, bringing forth that frequency and sound into the earth. And so as we start to maintain specific times uh, and exactness in the spirit of really hearing God and being in the spirit, being fixed in the spirit, we'll be able to open up realms of God in meetings bringing the presence in a greater and greater way, uh, an understanding of what God's trying to convey in that meeting and accomplishing the will of God in meetings. How many times do we go into a prayer meeting and we're praying all over the place? We're, not, we're almost like we're just focused. We're trying, to, we're trying to find something that we can hit on instead of just selling ourselves and listening for a moment and saying, okay, God, what do you want to say in this meeting? So his spiritual ears, his ears, his spiritual ears, it says he heard a great voice. 
The word heard means to understand what's being said and to perceive it. Uh, like a teacher considering it, giving ear to a teacher that's instructing. But it also is directly connected to the sound of an instrument, meaning there's a frequency that God is bringing. There's a certain sound. It's a life-giving sound that he wants to bring into our meetings. And he said he heard a great voice. The word great meaning megas, meaning magnitude, large, and uh, you know, numerous, spacious. Uh, but what the word great also means is it affects, it greatly affects the mind and the natural events. And that's pretty important. It is powerfully affecting our senses. It emanates the ability and virtues and the authority and the power from where the voice originates. So see, if we could hear in an exact way, being fixed in the spirit, fixed in time, finding the chamber of God for our meetings, and then releasing that, that's where you see that thing that carries that weight of glory, that power, that breath, that life-giving flow. When that happens, there's virtue, the virtue of God is released in a meeting, the authority of God is released, the power is released, people's senses are affected, that's where we see people literally falling down and no one's praying for them. We're seeing the effect upon minds, minds are transformed, natural events are shifting, and the church is alive. And so it's also correct, it's also connected with frequency. And, it, and when you start to look at the word structure even more, it's talking about great, meaning the upper range of a scale of extent, meaning that that's the upper range. It's not the lower range. It's not the normal range. It's not what we've gotten ourselves accustomed to. It is something that is beyond our abilities, our strengths to grab hold of. So that voice is carrying this frequency of heaven, wanting to come into our meetings, wanting to change how we are thinking, wanting to change uh, how we see the virtue and the power and the authority that's been given to us and to see that start to be exercised inside of our meetings. That voice that tr had a sound of a trumpet, he said, meaning there was a frequency that was speaking to him. That's why when we hear things in the spiritual realm, being fixed in that place, sometimes we're having to decipher the frequency of it, and it may take a little time. But he maintained that flow, and this is the thing to think about. He maintained that flow. He allowed the moment of the flow of being in the Spirit to expand within him and became a portion of it. Remember, he was in the Spirit, which means to become. He became a portion of that, and actually, I put it this way, he turned his being into the experience and, and, and into that to care, literally becoming what he was experiencing in the spiritual realm. And then from that point, he turns to see this voice that was sitting there. He writes down, he publishes, he gives this out to the church. And today we're still watching, looking, uh, peering into the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not the revelation of end time prophecy. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he maintained that flow to write the entire book. And I understand what that is like when I wrote the uh, Breath of God book uh, in 2014, which is a prophetic understanding of where we are as a nation and what we're going through as a nation. Uh, the Lord gave me that 300 page book in 30 days and I could feel the Holy Spirit writing through me. And I was experiencing what John was experiencing when he wrote the book of Revelation. And so I encourage you today that there is a place in the spiritual realm that we can all go, we can all be, we can all stay, but we've got to get fixed there. And that means you got to get the distractions out of your life when you come into meetings. It means you need to settle issues of the heart before you come into a meeting. Most of the time we're settling those issues in meetings and then having some form of a flow at the end of a meeting. But God wants us to settle those at the, before we even get there and walk in and start to find the place in the spiritual realm where we get fixed. Find the chamber of God that's setting for a meeting. And then what I, I call it like this, mind the chamber until there's nothing else that you can find in it. Mind that chamber, stay in that flow, stay in that place where God is speaking with a life-giving sound where he's bringing his great voice, not just our voice, 
We don't want our voice. We want God's great voice to come into our meetings. We want him to, uh, to be uh, glorified and to see his authority and to see his power come and to see what he might do in a meeting. And so getting fixed is key. Getting fixed in the spirit and staying there. And the other thing that's key is knowing there is a moment of time for every meeting. We have a meeting tonight here. There's a moment of time that God wants in that meeting. And it may be the entire meeting. If we can get fixed quickly, the moment will unf unfold sooner and we can stay in the moment longer. So, you know, people come in with needs. I, I mean, at one point we were praying for people at the door so their needs would be met. So we didn't have to wait to the end of a service because we wanted to get in the, into the spiritual realm and get people fixed into that realm. Well, I hope this is a blessing to you. We're going to have more of this kind of teaching at Legacy School, LegacySchoolOnline.com. You can, we have a Facebook page. You can sign up in two weeks. We're going to talk about maintaining the presence of God. How do we build an atmosphere for the presence of God? This is one of those ways of doing it. We begin to pull heaven into the earth. We begin to pull the things of God into the earth where we can access those things and others can access them. We publish them. We decree them. And we begin to see God move. Uh, and we're going to talk about portholes, how to open up openings into the heavenly realms, how to maintain them, and how to expand them. We'll talk about the salahs of God and the tension points of God that come in meetings. There's literally five salahs that come into meetings, almost every, every meeting. And it's about holding tension until the next thing opens up. And that is about being fixed again, just like John was in, John, in Revelation 1.10. He was fixed in the spirit. So I encourage you today, stay fixed in the spirit. Find that place. Stay in that place till that place becomes I was. I was fixed till I became that pneuma breath spirit. Till I became that and then I voiced that into a meeting. And I guarantee your meeting is going to begin to change. God bless you. This will be up uh, when I'm done for you to review it if you didn't get the, all the information. At the beginning, came in a little late. That's fine. Uh, it'll be archives here. So God bless you, and thank you for tuning in today.